Everything we do is going to be about winning. Okay, we're going to learn to do things the right way, and that's the only way we're going to do them. Because if it doesn't help us, we're not doing it, man. That's just as simple as it gets. Win the Super Bowl. That's good. I mean it, too. You know, I, I, one of the things that, that the only reason you become a head coach in this league, in my opinion, is to win. That's it. That's the bottom line. If you do it for any other reason, you're wrong. Hey, Washington football fans, welcome back. Okay, guys, I know it's been a while since I made a video. I've had a rough couple weeks. I lost a very close friend. You know, somebody I've been friends with since the second grade. He's a godfather to his three children. I've had a tough time lately. I really haven't felt like doing anything, you know, with the channel about football, but you know, I'm kind of coming through it now and I'm ready to get back to it. So let's go ahead and talk about some uh, Washington football team here. You know, training camp, I don't have a lot to say about camp because, you know, a lot of the guys I predicted would shine way back. In my videos before mini camp, way back around the draft time, where I, the guys I expected would be the starters, they're all doing great. The regular guys that everybody expects to do great, they're all doing great. We're not getting a lot of surprises here. You know, uh, AGG's looking better than we thought. Harmon's looking looking good, kind of throwing some curveballs and the stuff. Everything's looking pretty good. I know I was uh I was a little hard on Cole Holcomb by not putting him in the list back then. I mean he was the best linebacker we had last year, but I thought we'd really, you know, step things up and came around the corner and I put way too much stock in Shaka Tony too fast. It's gonna be a process with him, you know, transitioning if they do decide to fully transition him to the linebacker position and I I just went way too hard, way too soon with that. But I do believe that Cleek Hudson definitely can get a spot in the starting linebacker core. So, there's, you know, linebackers. And then, like, John Bostick, there's a lot of talk about John Bostick always in the preseason, but we know. He's the cause of a lot of problems, you know, out there on the field throughout the year. And I just got to say, we got John Bostick on the team. And Brandon Marshall, former linebacker for the Broncos, is playing in spring league, you know. Same size, same age, same position. And he's a guy that has proven himself capable of elite play in the past. Unlike Bostick. I'm just throwing that out there. like. Hey, man, I don't know if it was some kind of off-the-field stuff. I don't know if he had legal problems or something. But he's in spring league. He's 30 years old, 31 at the most. John Bostick's on the team, and and uh, he's not even in, and, and Brandon Marshall's not even in the NFL. It's just crazy. Saw that we signed tight end Nick Gugamos, and, uh, it's an exciting prospect from the physical standpoint. You know, we like those uh, freaks on this channel, just like Ron Rivera does. Division three guy. He's been injured off and on since 2018. He was on the Seahawks offseason roster. Division three guy. Perfect 10 RAS score, just like Samus Reyes. But he gets his RAS score a different way. He's he's kind of a smaller, speedier guy. I mean, 6'4", 248, he's not tiny. But as tight ends go, he's a smaller, speedier one. Not as tall as Gasecki or Waller, but he is definitely, you know, has that kind of potential when it comes to physicality. Darren Waller, he was a wide receiver turned tight end. I don't know about Gasecki, but he could be, you know, he seems like the same type. He's uh, just fast, 
just basically giant wide receiver types with super athletes. So let's see if Pete Horner can go out there and uh, earn his bread. He likes those types. He had Vernon Davis early on, and that guy was a monster. I mean, he's a first rounder too, but you know, just physical athlete wise oh, standpoint, that kind of guy. So, let me talk a little bit about what has my attention the most. First off, more than a news channel, this is an opinion channel. It might have some news on it, and it might be about how the news affects my opinion, but it's still about my opinion on the team, the NFL. If you want straight news? There are tons of better choices out there. I'm, this is basically just my opinion. And uh, it's kind of just what the channel is. And I want to share my opinion on this whole vaccination thing. Personally, I think it's kind of BS, if I'm being honest. First of all... I'm not a fan of the NFL and teams strong-arming players into taking a vaccine that doesn't have approval from the FDA yet. Not an anti-vaxxer usually. It just, it's not approved by the FDA. You can't make people take it. I would have more respect for them if they did do something like a league mandate, because I could deal with that better because they'd be fully responsible for the players, at least that way. But they know it's not approved. They know it, and they're trying to feign overall responsibility by getting the players vaccinated at the same time that they're ultimately skirting the responsibility to their players. They're saying it's a personal choice and then leaning heavily on the players, threatening their money, harm to their team's records, all while pitting the players against each other from, you know, records and money standpoints. It's dirty, grody, slimy tactics from the NFL. But it doesn't stop there. Then the team itself gets in on it and tries to use Ron Rivera's condition like some kind of emotional blackmail and another way to pit not only teammate against teammate but possibly sway the fan base against the players stigmatizing or demonizing any player that chooses not to be vaccinated of being selfish for not thinking of their coach's health it's just dividing people what they're doing if they just made it a rule players would have to deal with it straight up it wouldn't be this backhanded thing that it is and Coach Rivera's even joined in, if not led the charge here, you know, repeatedly talking about helping the players educate themselves on the process, then pub publicly expressing disappointment because he didn't get the response he wanted. Ron has been big on this education angle. But he's neglecting the fact that it's been shown that people have received the vaccine. You know, people that have received the vaccine, some have caught the virus after, you know. You know, being vaccinated doesn't guarantee that you don't get the virus. And then some people that, some of the vaccinated people, they can become asymptomatic carriers that can spread the virus without knowing they have it. 
So he could be putting himself into a situation where he has a false sense of security where if a player wasn't vaccinated, they'd, ex- they'd experience you know the symptoms and they'd at least know they'd have some type of warning. But the position he could be in there, they'd have no idea until Ron himself could possibly end up in a bad way. So there's all kinds of ways to look at it. I don't think he should be leaning on these players that hard or going so to one way. And with the way everybody's leaning on him, it's almost this mafia extortion kind of way like nice place you got here be a shame if somebody messed it up you know like the COVID list it seems like the players that hit that COVID list it could have been like it like it almost looks like it could have been tactical to the team and with the Ron Payne tweeting that he doesn't have it in an almost defiant manner it really makes me wonder how people find themselves on that list. And if there was a possibility that the team themselves placed the people on that list without meeting criteria or how loose the actual criteria is. Now, no Terry and no Chase, because I'm pretty sure they're vaccinated. Not sure, but I'm pretty sure. And I know Sweat is the most vocal about not being vaccinated. But then the COVID list reads like, like what would the maximum harm that could be done to the team via the COVID list be? And then, you know, David Sharp thrown in there to make it look a lot less, you know, (laughs) obvious. I mean, I don't know. Payne's tweet just really makes it stand out like a, like it's a shakedown from the team, the NFL, or whoever's in charge of the COVID protocols. Like, oh, you don't want to get you don't want to get vaccinated. This is what could happen in the regular season. You know, it's like a scare tactic. And I just would like to have more information about how they landed there. You know, they're saying, like, contact tracing, maybe. But, you know, you got Payne out there tweeting that he doesn't have it like that. It kind of makes me seem like, you know, he was a little upset that he ended up there. And it would kind of lead somebody to that direction. In the end, I guess it all doesn't matter. You know, all this stuff twisted the players' arms, and they jumped from 60% vaccinated to 85 so I guess they got their desired results but the league's refusal to step up to a place of responsibility really irks me and uh eh, I was gonna leave it there but uh yeah I'll go ahead and leave it there I'll I'll have some other videos out soon And uh, it's great to be back. Felt good talking to you guys. And uh, hail to the Washington football team. Anybody watch this far, I love y'all. Peace.